okay, here we are at the beginning in a complete empty 3D space. And before we actually jump into the first building block, the points, I show you how to navigate in that space. Okay, what you can see here is these are the viewports. Top, front, right, perspective. There are more, but let's keep it as it is at the, for the moment. With the left mouse button, you can, if you hover over any of these viewports and you click, then this viewport gets activated. You can actually also see that in this um, properties window, there are things changing. Will tell you which in which uh, viewport you are. Now we are in perspective viewport. It tells you the width. It tells you the projection, the camera lens, and so on. If we now click again with the mouse and move towards the left, either down or up or down, it has this dashed uh, rectangle. If you move it to the right, it has a solid line rectangle. That's different ways to select things. Now we have nothing in here, but if we would have something, for example, a box and another box, and we would use one of these uh, selection modes. For example, I will select this box with the dashed line, then it will select everything which is touching this line, this line. However, if I use the solid line, it only selects uh, the object which is completely within that line, within that rectangle. Uh, you can also select items by just clicking on it with the left mouse button. That's also possible. Let's talk about the right mouse button. The right mouse button is mostly for navigation. If you click and hold the right mouse button and move it around, you can see that it's, um, it's rotating the view. If you do the same with having shift uh, pressed on your keyboard, then it's panning. It'd be the same here. You can also rotate in these uh, parallel projection views. And well, actually, so if, if you are in a parallel projection and you press the right mouse button, it's panning. But if you go into rotation mode here, in here, you can actually also rotate that. And you can always go back with typing top, and then you're back in the top view. If you click Alt and the right mouse button, it's, it's a fluent zoom function. And if you use the control, then the zoom moves in the direction of your cursor. So it's hard to explain, but when you see it, you understand. Another way to zoom, which I, I use most of the time, I sh actually should use the right mouse, mouse button more. It's actually much more fluent, but the middle, the wheel, the mouse wheel, is, you, with that you can also zoom. And it depends on where you have your cursor, it will zoom to that, to the cursor or zoom out from that cursor. If you click the right, click the, the, the wheel, you get the, like a, a very small menu and can actually use this. It's, very, it's, it's actually quite a cool feature to just zoom to the extents and it just zooms to everything what's in the viewport, what's in the 3D space.
so for example if if I have um, this thing somewhere else here and I'm here and I want to see what's in that 3d world you can click uh, the wheel button and say zoom extend another thing is you can change um, the window layout so for example if you don't want to hover over this like um, dividers you can just move them around and you can also move them here in this cross you can move this cross somewhere and uh, you can also close these other windows and just open one if you double click any of these I am most of the time in that setting and you can also switch between the viewports here which, whichever viewports we had before in this drop down menus there is even more so set the view you can actually set different views here for example you can set an isometric view from northeast so it sets an isometric view from northeast and in here it actually gives you also the all the different ways and how to, to zoom even with the shortcuts I can even save my own views I can go in here and set views this is not just to select uh, a preset view you can also set your own views and you can name them so for example this view I want to have this view saved then I can save that here and call it I can always close it and if I move this now if I go to a different view um, then you can you can always go back to the named view and it's now here it's a new in this drop down list it, it has a new a, a new item which is the name of that view you set before okay let's create some points points are super important in this program as our curves and edges and lines and surfaces but points are everywhere for example this box is as you see here made from points there are different types of points some are defining geometry and some are uh, control points so for example here in that box is defined by all these um, corner points but there could be, if I draw here a curve, then you can see there are points which mark the end and start point of this curve. But then there's one which is off and that, that would be called a control point. And you can even snap to these points if your snapping is on the points or you look at, if you look here points on points off sorry on off and on and you can see that you could snap to this to even to that control point which normally is not visible but yeah there are different ways to create points and I will also show so I will show how you do it in, in Rhino in the 3d space but because grasshopper is it's getting so important that I also show you how to do that in Grasshopper. So this is a Rhino tutorial, but it's, it's also a Grasshopper tutorial. So you could click here, single point, and just hover over your space and click. That's one way. But as you can see, it's always then it's always in your construction plane. The construction plane is this is defined by this grid. So this point, whenever I, now I click here again and draw my point, it will be always in that plane. You don't have to click here all the time. You can actually repeat the action by just right click, short, and it will repeat that f a command to draw this point. And you can actually see here 
uh, to where this this is always just moving in this uh, C plane. If I move in here, then something different happens. It actually moves in the in this uh, set Y plane. It's uh, we move along this green line. Uh, if we look at this point here in the properties, we can actually see what type of object it is. It's a point, it's in a certain layer with a certain color, and there's some details. Uh, the point is in these coordinates. The coordinates we get to now, because I can also go, I can either click here and it will just ask me for the location of the points. I don't have to click. I can also just type in my coordinates. I can say zero for X, one for Y, and let's say 20 for the Z axis. And it will place it exactly there. So if we look at it in the details, point is at one at zero one and twenty if i right click i can again just type in my coordinates 20 comma 40 comma 100 right so this is my new one if you hover over this i point icon you see also that there are multiple points if you right click it's actually starting a different command which automatically repeats the command to draw a point so you can just click 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 or you can for each of course try type your coordinates if I if I only put two coordinates it's also possible but then it assumes that your C value is zero that's also possible and it will go on forever until you press enter it's actually tells you here or you press right click that's also possible right click is also ending the the, the command why i'm why i'm showing you how to create points because a lot of objects in rhino up x are built from points and some you will build in the same way as you create these points uh, the project will ask you uh, that the program will ask you to place a point in order to build a certain object. For example, the surface. The surface is built from. It already tells you from three to three to four corner points. And if I hover over here, I could, for example, either place my point. Again, it's going to be in that that plane I'm working in, and uh, I could then. My second one I want to type, I can type 200 by 200 and then Y is maybe 100 and 30, it doesn't matter, it's, it's just an example. And you can always, with the red, within any of these commands, you still can rotate your viewport. Port. And this is super handy this is not something which every program has every 3d program has some 3d programs don't allow you this but it's this is quite amazing that you can still do other commands in between so rotation or zooming with the with the right mouse uh, with the wheel or even zooming with your uh, with your right mouse button and then if you have your snapping on, which is the snapping here, this, you can snap to different things like points, endpoints. Then you could, for example, define your third point like this, and then another one. And this creates your surface. But we're not finished yet with points. Uh, if you hover over this triangle, there's actually another menu coming in, coming out. Yeah, let's do it like this. And I, sorry, again, if you click here, 
this menu comes and if you if you hover away and then click then it's gone again but you could actually click here and detach that and you can put it wherever you want so uh, now I have my single point here you can also type point and that will create your point that's also possible um, multiple points we already had extract points we're coming to that in a moment closest point uh, for example I have a curve made from points by the way from points and control points and I have another point somewhere for example here then I could I could try to find out what is the closest point along this curve to that point in that case yeah it's probably that point here but th there might be situations where it's not that obvious and then you can use this you can actually use the closest point function and you could also closest point that's then the function to it in the comment line you could also use that I for example not always you know all the commands it's almost impossible to know but then it actually asks you select target object for closest point okay ba base point for closest point you can create one it asks you if you should create a line that would be if for example I place my point now here then it will just create a point to that point but now I lost I lost my base point so if I repeat that repeat remember this is just a right click select target objects and then press enter and um, you would say create line then I just press C because the C is underlined here yes with enter yes so so you agree then it's yes and now if I click somewhere it would create a line and I have also my endpoint here or I choose this one and this one press enter and then I choose O for object and choose my point that's interesting it actually just gave me one option the closest from between all these that's that's something to remember because I show you how that would be different in grasshopper another very interesting function and by the way you can just go through and actually try it yourself this is it's it always works the same way so if I want to find the closest point between two curves I mean try that on a piece of paper that's not that easy I have two curves and if I choose that command I can select this one and this one and it actually creates a line at the, the two points on the closest distance between these this is super handy I guarantee especially if you work in, in, in plan and I, I know when you start out with that program you often try to geometrically solve it as you did like 20 years ago on your with with ruler and, and, and pencil but they are they, they, this program is already, already built to solve these problems mark end and start start point that's that's handy but you i mean you could you could of course do this with your snap with your point snapping uh, on and then you just draw points and then i have my points as endpoints that will just give you the the mark start point it mark the start point or if you right click mark the end point 
and it gives you the endpoint. Another very useful tool is dividing and creating points. So I have a curve and I want to divide it. For example, I have my my uh, line, my curve here, and I want to divide the curve. Then um, it, asks, it gives me again certain possibilities. Do I want to split it? It means it splits the curve in all these segments. Should, should it mark the ends? Yes. Group the output? No. Distance the, the length this length of the segment is sixty. So I could, if I now just put a number, let's say uh, eighty, then it means that if I now go back with control Z and I do this whole thing again. Oh, sorry. Then it stored the last number I, I put in. We, you could try all these other things yourself. Maybe we just try to get at just the first one. So the split option never did that actually before. But now split is on, it says split yes. And I use, let's say I want to split it by three, oh sorry, by a hundred or maybe. 200 then it didn't create points it actually split the curve so this is technically not creating a points but yeah it's it's another output you can go back with control Z and the other option is to actually divide the curve by numbers so it it takes the length of the curve and divides it by the amount of points you want. That can be very useful if you have something like this and you want to draw lines in between and you can divide actually both curves at the same time. Uh, sorry, I took the wrong. So you can select these and then press your uh, command or you press the command and it will ask you to select the curves you want to divide that's also possible so I select these and then enter and then it asks me oh sorry uh, I want to use the other the other command is the the right click one select the curves and then now it asks me how many segments you want and it also again here split is on I don't want split I want points you can still go back to length which is interesting so that would just go back to the other command at the moment there is set to three segments and I can set it to four and it gives me four segments and it, it plays the points it divided the curve into four pieces with the same length and not just one it, it did it for both of them which is quite cool so you could do that for uh, any kind of number of, of 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 curves and then you can do whatever you want to do with it another thing is point grid that will basically create a grid of points in whatever plane you want. You can then, again, you see there are different options. Diagonal, you want to create this, the first base point, or the, you want to create um, this kind of grid with three point, with defining, by defining three points. Should it be vertical? Should it be in center? You can try all these things yourself, I think. Uh, What's important here is the the count of points in the different directions. And what is actually cool, you could not just create a grid, but you could actually create a three-dimensional grid. Um, let's show that if I go here and 10 and I click, I create my first corner, my first corner of the base and 
let's place it on the origin. And I could now um, type in a hundred by a hundred and the height a hundred. Then it created me this three dimensional point grid. And they are, it's a group. No. It's not a group, it's a block, sorry. So it created a block of, of, of points. It, there's a bit of a bug here. It's funny that you cannot see them if you click on them. Maybe it has something to do with the, yeah, here you see it better. You can see it in the wireframe, in the wireframe mode. I will go through modes another time. But basically it's a point, it's called point cloud. And it's, it's, it's basically a block. It's not a group, it's a block. And I will exp explain the difference another time, but you can actually say explode and it will give you all the points. Let's turn this off. I don't like this grid here. And I want to set a different background. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some awesome stuff going on here. So this is uh, yes yeah, another way to place.